All right, so now the next part of this tutorial begins. We're gonna do the same thing that we did where we went up here and we kind of created some growth patterns to go over our skin. And we're gonna kind of repeat that process, but do something a little bit different later on to even create even more bu bubbly boils across the skin. So what we're going to do here now is go to our pyro source spread tool, so spreading fire tool, and we're gonna drop it down again. And once again, deleting everything that we don't need. So we only need really four nodes, these four, and we're just gonna put this little guy down over here. Now, the thing about this um, that's gonna make it a little bit different from our previous kind of spread is that now that we have animated geometry, we have to factor that in to our kind of growth pattern. So that means we actually have to go up to frame one here and we can't, can't really simulate this over a moving mesh. We can, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna drop down a time shift. I'm gonna go over here where it says and it's at start. So it's gonna stay at the start frame or frame one. And I'm gonna go over here to my source input and I'm just gonna change this to something like three. So we're gonna get some higher res kind of points happening. Once again, selecting um, the hot create hot group, turning off bounding regions, enable the base group, and selecting an area down here that we can use as a growth. So just a tinier area. And so what this is going to do, it is going to, once again, you know, we're gonna make this region hot, so that create a hot value for that hot group, and go down here to our source spread, and we're gonna make, make this grow across the character. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna fool around a bit, make play with my noise maps a little bit, see what I can get up to in regards to how I want this to grow, and I'm just gonna play it back until I get a good spread across the object. So I'm gonna just edit this. I might have to lower this a little bit. I'm gonna increase my rate to let's say 1.3. Let's go over here to where we have our injection noise let's turn it off so we get more solid growth patterns and let's play this back cool well now we have a spreading effect this is exactly what i want i want it to spread a little bit faster than our previous growth because i want these you're going to see in a second what we're going to do with this growth map so now the fun part begins we get to transfer these attributes back on to our object so we can go over here attributes from boom and we want probably total burn. We wanna turn off primitives and I'm just gonna visualize total burn so we can make sure it's transferring over correctly. And we are going to do something like that. And we're just gonna blur this attribute as well. So we're gonna turn off blur, total burn, get something looking like that. Now the fun part begins here where we are going to use a pointer form to get this back to its moving mesh state. So we're gonna go point to form, plug this in, plug that in, and then plug this in. And now we should see some deformations happening on top of our boils growing. So I'm just gonna wait for that to play back, make sure everything looks kind of good and adjust our growth from here. So our growth actually covers all of our head, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of. So let's just slow it down a little bit. So we go back to our simulate spread, maybe instead of one, maybe make this 1.1, uh, which will slow it down and we'll see what happens there. So we do have some bumpy bumps. Um, I'm gonna turn off my noise here so I can kind of see the deformations. I think I want more abstract deformations because like it's almost, we're seeing some deforming in the face, but it's almost, a little bit too softened now. So um, I'm gonna revisit that in a second, but I'm gonna just say, let's go back to, to right here and lower this to 0 0.5 and let's go back to frame one. I'm gonna go back up here to where it says bumps and we have our bumps here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do something like this, make it even deeper into the skin so we get even more rigid formations. Now, attribute blur might not be working too well for us, so let's get rid of that and try smooth. Smooth and attribute blur on the P uh, attribute might be considered the same thing and the same effect, but I do find a smooth gives you more filtering qualities when it comes to smoothing the surface of an object. Here you can see it almost looks a little bit better because it gets rid of some ridging that 
might have made us a little bit uncomfortable and I think it's overall a little bit smoother as well and it can give us more options for going deeper into the skin for those big giant bumps. So I think I'm going to go with this note instead so we can have something gross and disgusting like that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to save that back out to disk. And as that's progressing, let's go back down here to our point of form. So our point of form is our big buddy over here. Um, I'm just going to go back to frame one. But what we want to do now is we want to blast everything but our total burn values on this object. And the reason we want to do that next is because I'm going to create some cool boils in specific areas across the face that are going to grow on their own and kind of give even more deformation to the face. So what we're going to do here is go to our blast and we're going to look for, not a group, we're going to look for an attribute. So I'm going to go points and I'm going to go at total burn less than five. There we go. So if we delete non-selected, you can see that that is very, very good in regards to what's eating away. So we want to keep that group, the hot total burn group, this hot area and nothing else. The next thing I want to do is I'm just going to turn off my visualizer over here and I'm going to add some attribute noise, which is going to add, create a noise pattern across my skin for me. I'm going to change this to a vector so we just get black and white values. Enable a remap map. And as this grows across the skin, we're going to see a cool kind of color map appear. And basically, we're going to emit points from those specific areas. And I'm going to decrease the element size so we can see some cool patterns start to appear. There we go. So now the next stage of this is pretty simple. We add a pop net. So the pop net, we're just gonna wait a couple seconds for Houdini not to freak out because the same when I, I find sometimes when you save stuff in the background, it lags a bit. So, or your computer starts screaming. So we're gonna drop down a pop net and we're gonna go up to this pop net. We're not gonna do much with it actually. We're just gonna scatter some points on the surface. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say source group, we don't really need a source group, but we definitely need an emission attribute. So we need CD. So that's going to grab the color, the source attribute. And we are going to scatter around, I'm going to go 56 points. Not a lot, and I'm not going to change my life expectancy either. I just want these points to appear. And as they get older, I want them to just access the age attribute that is associated with these particles. Because this is a simulation, I'm just going to wait for that to finish before I move on to the next step. Basically what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add an attribute delete and I'm just going to delete any attributes I don't need. So I don't need velocity in this case. I just need age. So I'm going to go um, doo -doo -doo, age. I'm also going to get rid of next ID and var map because we just don't need those. And that's the thing about when you're working in Houdini and you're using multiple layers of different simulations and deformations, you have to slowly, as you build your file, you have to be cleaning it at the same time. Otherwise, you're just like going to end up with a result that's so clunky and heavy and it's going to take time to go back and delete things that you don't need and you might have forgotten in that process. So I always like to clean as I go. So now that that's done, I'm going to just drop down a file cache and I'm going to call this pops. So pops is going to save like that. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back up here to my point of form where we have this lovely boy. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this onto that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab a little null, place it over here attribute transfer over age. So I'm going to go over here and plug this into there, plug this into there. And now I'm going to just turn off primitives age and I'm going to drop down a color sop. And this is just going to help me visualize the age while I work with it. And so we're going to get age and you can see like the radius is huge. So we need to go over here turn down the distance threshold because you can see how big it is, right? Like that's 
maybe a little bit too big. So, um, you turn down that distance threshold. And we also, just to visualize this better, I'm gonna turn down. Cool. So let's play this back for a second. So now you can see some points starting to appear across our character. Going up the ear, they're peering in certain specific areas. This is pretty cool. So as I play back this timeline, you're gonna notice these points just appearing. Now I'm gonna to have to adjust the distance threshold of how this age attribute is being projected back onto the face because I may want bigger boils. I might want a bigger radius of them as they grow across the skin. So that's going to also be controlled by the age attribute itself. So the next thing I'm going to do after I wait for this to kind of cook out is I'm determining based on all these scattering of boils around the face. Okay, I want a bigger radius maybe, like that looks better. You can see if you increase the radius, you also get more because that's how it works. Now I'm gonna go for that for now. And I'm also gonna drop down an attribute blur because I want to blur that attribute to create a fall off age. And you can see like, maybe we have a little bit too much little bit too much um and that might be a bit too big so we just have to go back in ever so slightly adjust how we're positioning things across the object now i might ha i think i might need more boils in my opinion i think 54 is a little bit too less so i'm gonna go down over here just to adjust this to like 67 something like that so now i'm gonna save that out again okay so that's almost cooked out so what I'm going to do over here, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to explain why I'm going to keep this color node in a second, because this color node is not only going to visualize our age attribute for us, but it's also going to create a good fall off value that I can manipulate as well, um, to further displace these little tiny bumps across the face. So what I'm going to do here right now, um, is that I'm just going to put down a couple nodes that just copy and paste it over here. So we're going to start with our group expression. What this is this group expression is doing is just selecting the areas of the color that I probably want to displace at some point. Um, I'm just going to choose a good range for of color to put in that group and then I'm going to work from there. So those are the areas of radius that I'm kind of working with and now from here is the fun part. So now I'm going to go over here to this, which is a wrinkle. And I'm just going to get rid of this because it didn't really work too well. And basically all this is going to do is, as you can see here, it's making those areas pointy because it's running over this color group, but it's also going and telling Houdini, hey man, um, P plus the normal times the color and a fit range of age to this multiplier is going to create these really cool bubbling boils across the surface and they're going to grow outwards as they grow and they're going to get progressively more pointy which means we have to smooth those areas out so i'm going to drop down an attribute blur again and now we've got some boils across the skin and you're also noticing that this phase something's weird with those normals right so we got to fix that so of course we're going to drop down a normal so now this is what's happening we if i play this back I'm going to go to frame 76 and basically what we can do here is you can see like over time these boils are growing because they're based on the age how these are kind of progressing across the face which is cool now i'm going to probably delete this color because it's a little bit distracting for me at this phase so what i'm going to do is just do an attribute delete and delete that color so you can kind of see those bumps a little bit more so you can see with how the growth is expanding, we've got some boils appearing on the face. Now, mm, let's go see if a nice smooth would work better than our attribute blur. So let's go in here, smooth. Blur actually almost works a little bit better. Let's do some filter quality stuff on it. See how what we can do to get some cool bubbles and boils going on. And let's, Sometimes the thing about attribute blur and smooth is that 
it kind of the the smooth note only works with primitive groups and the attribute blur works with really any group so that's why i like to use attribute blur a little bit more because i don't have to use group promotes constantly and constantly and constantly again it's just a matter of like how to you know do those things in specific areas um and give me kind of more control on what type of groups i'm working with as you can see here, we've got some interesting shapes starting to happen. We might have to say to our displacement, hey, maybe a bit too much or maybe not enough at all. What we're going to do, I think, is we're going to add an attribute promote, not attribute promote, group promote, just so I can show you how to smooth this out even more if you'd like to. Um, so we're going to use group promote and we're going to change this to primitives and then go to color. And then from here, what we're going to do is just drop down a smooth. So this should work now. <laughs> we're gonna go over here and we're gonna find the color group that's smooth. And now we can filter this even more. So now we have some blistering effects that are happening across our character. So I'm just gonna go to my last frame to see what it looks like on the last frame. That's interesting. We've gotten some really big boils happening. Hearing, going up the face, almost getting a little bit too big, I would say. So let's go back up to our displaced here. I'm going to put a VOP right underneath this to kind of even limit the growth a little bit more. So I'm going to use a VOP, put that underneath here. I'm just going to put this VOP here. We have age, and I want to output that into age again, so bind. And I'm going to put here age. Oh, we have to use a bind export. And we are going to put that into dare and say age. Now what we're also going to do is just go fit. And it's going to default on one. But I feel like if we do this, you can also see how much of a difference that makes. So we're not getting too many, we still get our bumps, but it's not as jagged as it was. It controls the growth ever so slightly, just a little bit more. Now, if I can go over here, I can, you know, if I want to do another multiplier, I can. But it'll, I think it'll be a lot more controlled. Perfect. Now, the hard part about this is now we can just cache this part out too. So we're going to call this file cache boils. I mean, we'll do the skin. Save the disk. And we'll put a little null underneath here. We'll call this skin boils. Boom. 